it's just reminiscent of the silver squeeze in the beginning of February where, you know, dealers are running out of product like that and, and it can happen and, and it will happen. And no, I don't see, in fact, I think this is the lowest premiums we'll see all year. I think it's going to continue to move up. If, they, if, if there's more weakness in the metals, the premiums will go to the moon because you have everyone bargain hunting and there just isn't enough supply to replenish in a timely fashion. I think the, the mistake that the, the, a lot of people make with precious metals is, is um, this isn't being disingenuous um, or disingenuous. It is the mistake people make is looking at it as an investment. Now, it very well may perform like an investment and maybe like a damn good one. And, but what it is to me is wealth. And when, when you see these swings, I, I think it's important to take a step back and say, why? Why does it, why are they making it so difficult for the price to rise? At the same time, why is Comex being bled dry by the, the, the uh, sovereign wealth loans? Why are all the central banks accumulating it and taking possession of it? Why are the commercial banks doing it? The biggest money in the world is misdirecting, you know, the no look pass. They're misdirecting through price. Uh, the, the precious metals market is a grape sitting on top of, of a pumpkin. And, uh, you know, the, it's a tiny little market. And if they are looking to reposition or if they are looking to keep people from freaking out and running out of dollars or whatever the incentive is, it's easy to do with price. Reclassified gold as a tier one reserve wouldn't have had they not looked at it being an integral part of, of, of or, or a base from which everything else will spring up from when the dust settles. So, yeah, I look at this as, as basically going to buy a new car or, or a new pair of jeans and it's on sale. Don't be bummed out. Be happy that you're getting a good deal and it's still available before it just becomes, uh, you know, unattainable and, and ridiculously high premiums and prices. Now, there are others out there and there are private refineries that amount to a hill of beans. So other than that, that's it. And the reason they say there's no bull market like the gold bull market, Rob, is because it's predicated on concern and fear. And in that event, there is going to be no one selling at a big profit to go back into dollars when there's that seminal event. So in the last three days, we haven't had one buyback as the price has gotten clubbed, right? Not one buyback. No one's selling. This is all done on paper. So the point of it is, is that no, there isn't enough supply. The mints can't keep up, nor can the refiners. And this is when only, you know, one out of every 20 people, uh, or excuse me, uh, one out of every 200 people, according to that one half of 1%, own any gold or silver. So what if it's what if it's 16 people, if it goes to 8% and it's a 16 fold increase? You know, what, what happens to the available supply? No, we cannot handle it. And, and when I tell you these are the lowest premiums I've seen really in over a year, uh, it's true. Now, from a premium standpoint, in most cases, we're still double what we always were. Everything but the American Eagle Silver, which is uh, more like uh, three times or four times, four and a half times, what it, and they were eight times higher than normal at some point a few months ago. Premiums are double what they were over the last 20 years, but lower than they've been over the last 18 months. And uh, this is a sweet spot, unless you think it just continues to get drubbed and things get better and, you know, everything becomes rosy again. I don't, and I wish I did. But when I see uh, an infrastructure bill that passes where only a small portion is used to to, to make roads and bridges and airports better and rest of it's going to wonk issues like, you know, uh, gender issues and uh, issues that have nothing to do with infrastructure. Um, I, I just have lost faith uh, in the system and I, I don't see things getting better anytime soon. Um, I think we have to go through a cleansing process in order for things to get better. We're not there yet. When that event happens uh, and people realize that one of the few places to go are precious metals. It happens overnight. Overnight, everything disappears. If someone were to spend with me 30 to $40 million, it's a lot of money, I'd have nothing left to offer anyone else tomorrow. Most companies keep between 25 and 45, 50 million of inventory, if that, uh, or they buy it from distributors. They don't even hold it themselves. Um, so there's just not a lot out there. If you realize there's a half a dozen 
decent sized precious metals companies in, in the United States, cumulative, they probably don't even have $300 million together. Uh, so at what point does it just disappear? Um, a seminal moment like that, you would find very quickly within 48 hours, everything would be gone. With all of the stuff going on in this world that the mints are still pumping stuff out. But I, I look at it as, as a gift, you know, don't forget, from 1933 until 1974, it was illegal to even own gold in this country. So uh, those kind of things happen. I think you have to hope for the best, prepare for the worst. But no, I don't see premiums going back down until we have a reset of the of the board, until we see things go back to where price discovery becomes a little bit more natural. You know, in an environment where the, the Fed is setting the back end of the bond market instead of the, instead of the market doing it, where price discovery is set um, naturally um, and organically and not being manipulated. As Chris Powell will say, there are no free markets anymore, just manipulations. And until that day happens, until we see some semblance of a free market society, no, I don't see premiums going back down. Quite to the contrary, this to me is the eye of the hurricane right now. And I would think it's naive to believe that the trailing edge isn't bearing down upon us. And um, I'll tell you one thing, the people in this industry who have been paying attention realize that because like I said, over the past two and a half days, three days, the people who are running things are driving it into the ground, eviscerating the value. Uh, and the, uh, the infrastructure bill that passed last night is just another example of that where modern monetary theory basic universal income and you know um what was considered uh, rational and normal be damned we are a new period of time where i think if people don't own gold and silver they're making a mistake and if they do own it and are looking to get rich be careful what you wish for because in that environment it comes at the expense of the dollar and everyone else that you love in this world in this country is going to suffer and especially because the traditional forms of wealth, stocks, bonds, and real estate are all now positively correlated at all time values. Stocks and bonds used to be inverse, now they're not. If interest rates rise, at some point they must, everything collapses. And so I think when you look at gold and silver, just know that the, the mathematics will bear out either a reset or a collapse or both. And so you have metals to protect you from that. I don't think you own it to get rich. And when they fall, cost average and i think you know taken from someone who sells gold it's probably not as easy to believe what i'm saying but i've been doing it every two weeks for 31 years uh, and i believe in my soul that it is the road to protection in an environment where very few other assets are going to do the same thing for you people may say cryptocurrencies take a look at the infrastructure bill they're going after cryptocurrencies right now in an effort to tax the cryptocurrency exchanges. Not only that, in looking at the Biden tax bill, I've seen from my accountant that they want to start implementing Form 8300s uh, for precious metals companies when they receive Bitcoin from the consumer. They're trying to close the door. They're trying to, to make all of the options or the alternatives to traditional assets and the dollar few and far between. And with the exception of cryptocurrencies and precious metals, where the heck else do you put it right now? That isn't at all time highs, uh, most of which unjustified all time highs. One last thing, I, I heard a great statement by George Gammons and he said, you know, we've come to a point in time where the economy is supposed to be the balloon on a hot air balloon and the stock market, the basket underneath it. So when the balloon goes up or left or right, the basket follows it. If the balloon crashes, the basket crashes. It's inverted now. And the basket is the balloon. The, the stock market is the balloon. The, the financial markets are the balloon and the economy is the little basket. And uh, we've come to a point in time where all asset classes as a result are distorted and price discovery is very difficult. There will come a time when mother nature comes in and like Austrian economics says, sweeps the board and removes all of these distortions and misallocations in price. It's coming, don't know when, you know, at the end of the story, Rob, the little boy does see the wolf. And uh, I may be the poster child for the, the little boy who cried wolf, but I am very confident the wolf is coming. And I am not telling you to do this to get rich. And I'm not telling you to do it to protect against the end of the world. I'm just simply telling you it's been the only thing 
since really the beginning of time that has retained its value and been universally accepted as wealth across the entire globe.